In this video, I'm going to show you three different methods for solving trigonometric equations and show you how each method can be used to understand the others. Graphing calculators get a bad reputation. I feel like they're often used just to get the answer to a problem as opposed to a way of understanding what graphs look like. And remember, if we understand what graphs look like, it adds a whole new dimension to problems like this. This problem is asking us to solve this equation, sine x equals 1 over root 2, on this interval. But remember, sine x is just a function, and functions can be graphed. So what this question is really asking us for is what x value makes sine of x equal to 1 over root 2. Now if I graph the function sine of x on the interval 0 to 2 pi, remember 2 pi is just 6.28, so that's what you're seeing here. It should be pretty clear that I have two solutions to the equation sine of x equals 1 over root 2. If I graph the line y equals 1 over root 2 and find the points of intersection of that line and the graph of y equals sine of x, I should be able to find the solution to the equation sine of x equals 1 over root 2. What I'm really looking for is the exact value of pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 as my solutions to my equation. Let's move on to another method. What I'm going to do is use my understanding of special triangles and the cast rule to solve this equation using a different method. To use this method, I know to grab this special triangle because I'm looking for the angle that makes the sine ratio 1 over root 2. Now this ratio makes me very happy because I know on the special triangle involving pi over 4, if I look at pi over 4, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse or 1 over root 2. Now I should mention that this method only works when the ratio given involves special side lengths like 1 over root 2. It'd be pretty hard to grab a special triangle if you don't have special side lengths. Now if I sketch this angle using a terminal arm that starts at 0 degrees and rotates through 2 pi, because the ratio we're looking at is positive, we know that our angle will lie in the first quadrant, because all trig ratios, sine, cos, and tan are positive in this quadrant. The cast rule also tells us that in the s quadrant, only sine is positive. Because we're looking at sine and our ratio is positive, I can say that my second solution lies in the second quadrant. Now you'll recall that if I rotate my terminal arm halfway through 2 pi, I reach pi. So this whole thing will be pi. I know this wedge to be pi over 4. Therefore I can say if I take pi and subtract out the wedge of pi over 4, I get what's left, which is 3 pi over 4, or this orange angle here. So using this method, I've managed to find two values for x that will make sine of x equal to 1 over root 2. These answers are written as fractions of pi, are not rounded, and will give me exactly 1 over root 2. I found this really awesome Desmos simulation that illustrates how the unit circle can be used to develop the graph of sine. You can see here as I rotate my terminal arm counterclockwise around the unit circle, I begin to develop the graph of sine. Now if I place my terminal arm at pi over 4, I get the same value for sine as I did on my graph, 1 over root 2. If I continue rotating my terminal arm into the second quadrant at 3 pi over 4, you can see that I get the same value. So this little simulation should help you understand why two values will satisfy the equation. So the third method I'm going to show you involves using a scientific calculator and the sine inverse function. This is a pretty popular method because I often find students aren't interested in the complex inner workings of trigonometric functions and their connection to the unit circle, and instead prefer something quicker and more efficient. So I'll show you very quickly how to use your calculator to solve this equation. However, be warned, you do still have to understand the cast rule to find both solutions. So if we have the equation sine of x is equal to 1 over root 2, I can take the sine inverse of both sides in order to solve for x. You can think of it as the sine inverse and the sine canceling out in order to leave x isolated. But remember, what we do to one side, we must also do to the other. So depending what type of calculator you have, when you take the sine inverse of 1 over root 2, you'll get either pi over 4 or you'll get 0 0.785. I can always tell which students are using their calculators because if the question asks for exact answers and they're writing 0 0.785, they clearly have not used special triangles in the cast rule and instead have elected to use the sine inverse function on their calculator. As I said, the other issue with this method is that it only gives us one answer. So at this point, we're going to look back at the second method to apply the cast rule to determine the measure of the second angle. Remember, our first angle was in the first quadrant, where all trig ratios are positive, and the second angle is in the second quadrant, where only sine is positive. So if we take pi, or half a rotation of 2 pi, and subtract out the first angle, what we're left with is 3 pi over 4. And so those were the two solutions that we obtained using the previous method. Like I said at the beginning of this video, an understanding of each of these methods really adds a lot of depth to your understanding of trigonometric functions and solving trigonometric equations. Hey.